Hi everyone, it's Pansy from Smart Money Moves. So today I'm going to talk to you about five best beginner tips for investing in 2020. Beginning investors face so many questions. How to get started? What is the best way to get started? When should you start investing? Whom should you listen to or not listen to? And what is the advice do I have for people that are brand new? Now to give you an idea, I started investing when I was only 20 years old and now I'm 24 years old. At the time, I didn't know anything about investing, but I read a lot of self-help books and books on finance and that's how I learned the basic of investing. And the most important thing I realized was to start as early as possible because the earlier you start investing, the more beneficial it's going to be for you later in life because you can truly take advantage of compounding your money. And of course, the earlier you start, the sooner that you can make those mistakes, learn from those mistakes, and you have a much higher risk tolerance because the mistakes you make won't be as big as opposed to someone in 30s, 40s, or 50s, where you want to be more conservative with your investment strategy. So let's talk about it. If investing is so important for your financial future, why does it have to be so complicated? But here's the good news, it doesn't need to be. This five tips on investing money for beginners are straightforward and to the point, proving you can take the complication out of how to invest for beginners. The first is easier said than done. Start now. The biggest barrier to investing money as a beginner is simply getting started. The answer to when to start investing is today. There is no such thing as the perfect timing to get in the market. Start now and keep adding to it. Now going back to my story, I started investing at 20 years old with barely nothing. And today I've been able to build myself up to a solid high six-figure investment portfolio at only 24 years old, which is also setting myself up to be a millionaire in the next three to four years. I just wanna to talk to you guys about some basic principles that are really important for you to understand. As a new investor, begin your first year assuming your investment will go down. Learn to accept that your investment will lose money for some years. And if it does, it doesn't mean you have done anything wrong. In fact, it likely means the opposite. You should add more to it while it's on sale. So let go of that fear and start now. Second is to pay yourself first. This is one of the principles that is talked about in any financial or investment books you read. Pay yourself first is so important because you need money to invest. For that, you need money that you put aside every month to save or to invest, whatever it is. And if you don't have that, if you can't take a percentage of what you make and put that aside, then there is no hope to growing your net worth and making more money. So whatever amount you make per month right now, whether it's $2,000 a month or $4,000 a month, I recommend to put aside 10% and pay yourself first. Put it in a savings account or an investment account that you're not going to touch. You also need to make sure you have an emergency fund, very important, before you even think about investing your money. Because if you don't have at least three months of emergency fund, then you're in trouble. If you need help with that, feel free to check out my video on how to properly budget and manage your money. I will put the link below in the description. So now that you've taken care of your emergency fund and you have some positive cash flow every month by paying yourself first with at least 10% or more, the next big question for beginners investing is what do you do with that money? So let's start with exploring different investment options that exist. You can invest in bonds, mutual funds, real estate, stocks. There are plenty of investment options. For me personally, index funds is great. Index funds is basically a mutual fund that has very low fees, like ridiculously low fees. But it's basically owning a segment of a market. For example, the index fund you can own is S&P 500, which is basically US top 500 companies. Number three, what has helped me be consistent in investing is setting an investment goal for yourself. Knowing your investment goal is the first step to an investment strategy. And you can do that by setting yourself a short, medium, or a long-term goal and giving each of them a time frame and putting a dollar amount besides each goal. For example, a short-term goal could be a vacation to Switzerland next year, while a medium-term goal might be down payment on a house in next three to five years. Having a tangible goal is a great motivator in keeping you up with savings and investing consistently. Four, don't let the media scare you. 
First, understand that the media and you as an investor have very different agendas. The, the media's goal is to get views, which they often do by writing sensational headlines. Your goal as an investor is to grow your money over time, and this is achieved by focusing on the factors that you can control, such as time invested, risk, cost, and taxes. Research has shown that the less one tinkers with their investment portfolio, the better off you will be long-term as you don't try and time the market. So the next time you see the headlines declaring the next stock market crash, try to keep a cool level head and make decisions based on your investment strategies and not the latest headlines. Have the long-term mentality. Don't get so caught up in the get rich quick thing. Number five. So lastly, to follow up on what I just said about things you can control, the one thing you can control is to keep your costs low. You can't control how your investment performs, but you can control how much you pay for them. As a beginning investor, it's very important to pay attention to the cost involved in an investment. This generally means using an index fund, which averages 0.15% expense ratio, rather than an actively managed fund, which averages 0.67% expense ratio, and can go much higher. Over the long term, this higher fees can eat away at the return on your investment. So to recap, start now. Even if it's just $200, start now. The earlier, the better in terms of compounding your money. There is this big misconception about investing that you need to have a lot of money, which is not true. Pay yourself first, minimum of 10% of your take home income. And also make sure you have at least three months of emergency funds set aside and don't let the media scare you. Have a long term mindset and invest consistently and also keep your costs low. So hope all of this helps you guys get started in investing. It's really all about the mindset game. So spend some time investing in yourself and doing proper research. I will definitely be making more videos on this topic. So if you have a question, feel free to leave a comment and also make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos and make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. See you next time.